what we got here is the remains of a MX7000 Code 3 light bar. Definitely got some, some pretty cool uh, parts here. Okay, this model of light bar from this era, I'm imagining it's 10 to 15 years old, maybe a little more, um, uh, has all uh, halogen bulbs. And then for the main uh, flashers, it uses uh, high voltage strobes. This stuff is all really well built. That's why I decided to tear it apart. But then I started looking at these things closer and uh, I said, hey, you know, there's some cool capacitors in here. You can make like a stun gun or something with that. Or all kinds of things with cool capacitors. But um, I tested it and it, it works. There's a way to um, trigger a, like a, a switch or control wire from here to change the strobe patterns. And I'll figure that out later, but I've got to figure it out to where I can hook up four strobes. Uh, just for my testing, I'm using um, some scooter batteries. These are six volts each, and the light bar is 12 volts. So that's why I got these guys in the series. I was just curious, like, I haven't checked them since I was using them for this and some other little tests. So, um, yeah. So, just make sure they're good. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Real good. I don't know, what do you think? 13 volts? Mm -hmm. so let's, let's see what we can do with this. So, um, yeah, I got it kind of disassembled here, but we can, we can make this work. I'm pretty sure. Okay, quick warning. Um, if you ever uh, mess with anything high voltage, and this is high voltage, it does have warnings on it, but you know, you should know that uh, something with big capacitors and for flashing strobes, I don't know, it's hundreds of volts, so I'm definitely being very careful. Okay, all right, we'll see you when you get back. Okay, good luck. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hooked up the, so there's two, ch it's a four channel uh, driver or controller, power supply. And uh, uh, two of the channels are disabled in default mode. Default mode means when you just supply the power. And then when you uh, switch some control, uh, uh, connections which I'm still deciphering then you can activate I believe the level of control you have is you can activate the other two channels so you get like a rear and then you can put on a front strobe something like that um, and you can also change the pattern of the flash you know it's an electronically uh, created randomized flashing that's pretty darn cool so um, what I do is I'm throwing these lenses over I really, I really hope the uh, strobes show up on the video. I've seen some videos where they don't show up too well because they're just so fast and so bright. Got the power. This is now 12 volts, two six volts in series. And I'm just gonna ground it out, turn it on. Should just go. I'm gonna try not to touch no wire, no metal. Okay. I don't know if y'all are seeing it, but that the one I'm aiming at is flashing. It may look weird on the video, but yeah, this one right here. Aim it. it is flashing. The top one's not, so I may be connected to an incorrect channel. So now I got the two correct channels hooked up. And then, uh... Oh, just kidding. Okay, that's popping. Look at that. Oh, that's weird. See that? The other channel took a break there. The other channel's not firing as much. Oh, you know what? It's a cellophane probably. Yeah, because that's actually a conductor on the outside there. I don't know. No, that's not a conductor. There's a metal wire wrapped around the outside. So having cellophane touching it's probably not ideal. Okay, let's just see what's up with that. We might learn something. Hey. What do you know? Okay, when you got strobes, don't let cellophane touch the front. In fact, I'm gonna generalize that and say don't let anything touch the uh, actual strobe. Hmm. God, that's bright. Like I can see part of it, not through the camera. It is, it is so bright. I mean, forget LEDs, man. There's nothing as bright as that. You know, if I figure out the uh, the control wiring, I can get four strobes off that one uh, driver. 
some of the other cool stuff here. It, um, a lot of stuff is metal, so there's a bunch of these single metal halogen mounts. And then there's these circuit board mounted halogen um, uh, reflectors. And uh, these have got actually a lot of potential. You know, you could do a lot with that. It's, it's, a, it's a really bright, old school, you know, LEDs look different, so you might like that old school halogen look. I like, yeah, I like it for sure. I love LEDs too. I mean, you, you use your batteries a lot more with these, but real potential with those for something. What we got here is the motorized thing, the old school, you know, when the lights are swinging back and forth. This is like, I think they call it an intersection light. Uh, let, me, let me hook up one of these because that's pretty cool. Okay, here's a, this is tricky how I'm trying to do this. I got the uh, frame grounded over here. And then I'm gonna turn this on. Kitty's trying to help. Hey, check it out, Kitty. Isn't that cool? I don't know if Kitty likes it like that, but that's hella cool. Got a couple of those at work. I'm gonna take out of here. It's too much fun. Another thing that was here is one of these different types of strokes. Also a heavy duty uh, flasher. There you go. Again, no strobes. Uh, maybe the strobes are actually kind of rare. There's another person's video where you can kind of see the strobes. I'm pretty good at searching the internet. And I came up with a manual for, uh, I think it's like 7,000. I can recognize some of the stuff we were looking at. Oh, if anyone's really trying to read this, I apologize. I'm just trying to give a glimpse. It's out there. I mean, you can download it. It's on one of their websites, I believe. Yeah, so lots of cool stuff out of uh, something trashed the side of the road. And um, I'll have some videos coming up when I finally get to building a cool safety life system. All right, more fun coming up soon.